Hi, I'm Heather Staines, the Director of Partnerships for Hypothesis. Thanks for joining our first webinar in a series for publishers. I'm here today with our founder and CEO, Dan Whaley, along with our colleagues, Nate Angel and Peg Fowler, who'll be helping out on webinar logistics. If you have any suggestions for future webinar ideas, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be collecting them throughout the course of the webinar today. And at the end, we'll do a quick poll to see what you might like to hear about from us next. This webinar is being recorded and will be accessible later from Hypothesis website publishing page. Before we get started, we just have a couple of housekeeping items. Because we have so many attendees today, we've placed participants on mute. We'd like you to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen if you have any questions. We'll be monitoring that throughout the course of the webinar and we'll take time at the end to respond. You can also use the chat feature. You can chat to everyone if you'd like to introduce yourself, for example, or you can chat to just the panelists in the event that you have any technical difficulties or anything like that. Here's a look at what we'll, we'll go over today. First, we're gonna talk about 10 questions that you should ask if you're considering annotation. Then Dan will give a quick overview of hypothesis. I'll talk a little bit about the, the value proposition for publishers and then do a live demo. I'll tell you a little bit about how to work with hypothesis and then we'll take some Q&A at the end. Before we get started, I thought it would be informative to do a quick poll to gauge how familiar you are with annotation technology. Next, I'm gonna hand it over to Dan. Thanks, Heather. Hey, everybody. It's great to have you all with us today. Uh, the, the topic of the webinar obviously is 10 questions to, that you should be asking uh, about providers and platforms of annotation. Um, uh, my colleagues will drop a link to this poll in the chat. Um, I won't go through all these questions here specifically, but we'll be addressing each of these points throughout, uh, throughout the presentation um, a, as we go along and, and happy to, to field questions uh, about them uh, later. Let me give you a little bit of background on Hypothesis. Um, first, uh, we're a nonprofit, as most of you probably know. Um, and we've chosen that model for a very specific reason, which is that we think uh, that in order for this technology, this new paradigm um, to be successful, that it needs to be stewarded uh, by an organization who um, is able to align with the interests of users, with the interests of publishers, and so forth over uh, the long term. Um, the web has been successful um, because specifically because of that alignment um, by the individuals and organizations that were involved at the beginning um, and as, as successful as a result of that. Um, the, we are funded through uh, grants uh, from a variety of foundations, the Mellon uh, Omid Foundation, uh, Sloan Foundation, Omidyar Network, the Hel Helmsley Trust, uh, and the Shuttleworth and Knight Foundations. Um, we are mission-driven. Um, our goal is to uh, focus on bringing uh, the standards uh, and the software um, necessary to bring this uh, capability forward to the world um, and also to provide uh, an instance of it as a service, but not the exclusive one. Um, this is uh, all we do here at Hypothesis, um, and we consider ourselves to be a mission-driven organization. Uh, we have a team of uh, 16 uh, full-time staff that are dedicated um, to annotation. Um, it's all we do here, uh, and they're roughly split between technical staff that help build the software and program staff um, that uh, bring it forward. And our vision is a unified, interoperable architecture for annotation across all scholarly literature, um, built in to the very fabric of the web. Um, this um, our architecture, we uh, believe, should be um, built as layers um, so that over any given document, any given article, you're able to see a variety of different kinds of notes for a variety of different uh, use cases. Um, notes that might be post-publication conversations for the general public, layers that might be private layers uh, where a classroom is teaching um, uh, an article for uh, in uh, private so that the, the annotations are uh, a, a discussion um, just for those uh, students. Um, expert communities that might uh, be annotating um, 
for a particular purpose for, for their audience. And also uh, layers that are perhaps produced by the publisher or authors or reviewers uh, or community members um, around uh, the article that are available at publication. Each of these layers potentially could be hosted on a different server with the annotations coming from a different provider. So this really gets to the heart of this uh, as a web standard architecture. Just like in your web browser, different tabs might uh, represent pages coming from different servers. In our uh, view, um, the annotation client is simply um, a uni uniform structure to bring different kinds of annotations for different purposes um, into the context of the page uh, wherever you are. Um, the, uh, this technology, this architecture is grounded in an, a new web standard that uh, passed uh, um, with full approval of uh, the W3C, the standards body for the web in February of this year um, with uh, more support um, uh, than for any other standard uh, before it in, in W3C history. So there's a very strong groundswell of support behind uh, web annotations, and it's um, really helped to um, uh, create um, a tremendous amount of momentum. Um, we are fundamentally focused in bringing collaboration around knowledge and around scholarly literature to the place where uh, it resides um, on the publisher's platform as well as um, on um, other uh, elements of the wider web. Um, as most of you know, one of the fundamental values of Hypothesis and the architecture we've chosen is that it works everywhere. It does it while it benefits from being implemented um, on publishers' content and being native and default um, um, to that content. Uh, if users want to annotate in other places, they can bring that uh, capability into the web now through plugin, a plugin or an extension, um, and later uh, through um, uh, the native um, uh, functionality uh, capability in browsers itself, which is one of the reasons why it was so important that the W3C uh, adopt this. Um, in support of this view, in 2015, we announced uh, a coalition, uh, which is now numbers over 80 of the world's uh, leading academic publishers, uh, platforms, and libraries that have made a commitment to bring web annotation to their scholarship, to their content, uh, to their platform uh, over the next uh, several years. We also run uh, a, a conference every year called I Annotate, which just happened in May of this year in San Francisco, um, where uh, uh, developers, publishers, uh, advocates, standards, uh, 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 individuals come uh, and present uh, over a series of a couple days. And, and the community aspect of annotation is one of the things that we um, focus on the most and one of the things that we think is most uh, important to uh, its long-term potential success. Uh, as far as how we work uh, with organizations that want to implement uh, annotation, um, we, we uh, characterize it as a, as a member-based model. For us, um, you all represent a potential partners that can help um, together with us, bring this capability to your platforms, to your users, in order to benefit uh, them, uh, in order to make uh, their, to, to add powerful tools to their capability, in order to bring an enhanced um, kind of content uh, and richness um, to your publications. Uh, as I mentioned, Hypothesis runs uh, an annotation service ourselves. Uh, with now over a million and a half annotations that have been uh, made by over 100,000 users. Um, interesting to note that only about 20%, 4% of annotations are public, um, uh, whereas 50% of those uh, annotations take place in, in private groups, um, but for journal clubs, classrooms, um, co-authors working on a paper, and about the last 25% uh, of those annotations are personal notes or private notes that people are taking for their own 
uh, individual benefit. So for that, I'll turn it back, uh, with that I'll turn it back over to Heather. Thanks so much, Dan. I want to tell you a little bit about the value propositions for publishers. While we've been speaking to publishers, we've heard lots of interesting use cases for annotation. We want to talk to you about a few of them here today. The first is enabling post-publication collaboration layer uh, using annotation. Remember that a hypothesis can be used anywhere on the web. Here's an example of graduate students and their professor discussing a piece of content at the University of Texas at Austin. In this particular case, it's a monograph from the University of Michigan Press. Some publishers um, that we've spoken to want something a little bit more custom. They want their own annotation layer. We call this publisher groups. The first publisher group is coming later this summer from eLife. Publisher groups are publisher branded and moderated groups that are publicly visible by default when a user lands on your content. The publisher can decide who has the authority to make annotations and who has the ability to read them. It's very, very flexible. Here's an example of how your publisher layer can be made visible on your page. Through a button, the button can show that annotation capability is possible and even how many annotations exist on an article. The end user clicks on the button and the publisher branded and moderated layer appears by default at the top. In this case, the publisher is elected to have annotation accounts auto-generated for their logged in users. So there's no need for them to have a hypothesis account or to navigate a way to create one. They can just start annotating. One of the advantages of standards-based and interoperable annotation technology is that annotation clients can see multiple servers and even interact with other clients. In this case, in addition to the publisher layer visible at the top, I can see that there are annotations in the public layer, in a reading group I'm part of, and even in a science class. It's very, very flexible. I can direct my annotations to any one of those given layers. A key piece of hypothesis architecture is that a private company, a publisher, even a pharmaceutical company, for example, can host their own annotation server, maybe for proprietary reasons, to run behind their firewall. Now, this may not be something that you're interested in doing now, but it's good for you to know that this is possible. You won't be locked in with one company forever, particularly a for-profit entity that could eventually be sold to one of your competitors. The second use case we hear about in annotation most frequently is annotations as new content. Hypothesis can plug into existing publisher workflows so that publisher staff, authors, and other experts can use annotation to create new content. This new content might be author updates, it might be connections to additional resources, it could be expert commentary. All of it will live by default in the publisher controlled layer. Here's an example of expert commentary, in this case, on an article in the Washington Post. Remember, you can use Hypothesis anywhere. As you'll see in a moment in the demo, it's really easy to connect articles through direct linking. You can also add media, uh, such as images and video. Um, again, connect it right to the article. It's very, very useful. The third case we're hearing about from publishers is the use of annotation and peer review so that reviewers can make inline comments on documents and publishing staff and authors can reply in line on those same documents. You can use it for single blind, double blind, and even open peer review. And some publishers have indicated that they wanna make peer reviewer summaries visible as additional content. Here's a screenshot of the eJournals Press peer review workflow, in this case on an AGU journal of geophysical research. Now I'm gonna do a demo. So here I'm going to do a quick live demo of the features and functionalities of Hypothesis. I'm a reviewer looking at an article, Vulnerability to Earthquake Hazard. As I'm going along and doing my research, I come across something that's interesting that I want to take note of. I simply select the text. Hypothesis will ask me if I want to make a highlight or an annotation. I'm going to select annotation. Now I can make my annotation. This is interesting. I can add a tag. Hypothesis will then ask if I want to post that annotation to the public layer or keep it private just for me. I'll select the public layer. Now I have an annotation that lives right on top of the publisher content. I could even share this annotation 
through social media or by email just by grabbing the link from the clipboard. The person that I send it to doesn't have to have a Hypothesis account or even know that Hypothesis exists. If they can get to the article, the article will open for them, the client will pop out, and they'll be scrolled precisely to the annotation that I wanted them to see. It's very convenient for collaboration purposes. Now, in addition to annotating um, on the HTML, annotations also transfer to other formats. Let's grab the PDF. Now, I mentioned HTML and PDF. We've also completed a project recently with NYU University Press to enable annotation of EPUBs. Uh, we'll be making an announcement about that in just a couple of weeks. Um, when the announcement is, is final, you'll be able to annotate on Readium.js and also EPUBJS documents. There's a lot of interest in that from our ebook customers. Now that we've got the PDF uh, opening up here, let's watch for our annotation. And there it is. Now, I've shown you how you can annotate to the public layer. You can also create private groups. The way that you do that is by simply selecting new group. Hypothesis will ask you what you'd like to call the group. I'm going to call mine earthquake studies. It's just that simple. Now I have a dashboard for my group. I can see when the group was created, who the members of the group are, and I can use the link over here to invite additional members to the group. Let's go back to our original article. I'm going to continue reading along. Come to something else that I want to take note of. Now, instead of selecting public, I'm going to go ahead and grab my earthquake studies group. Now I can make an annotation just for the group. This is interesting. Add some tags. Now I've posted it to my Earthquake Studies group. Someone else from the group may come along and make a reply. I agree. In addition to responding with text, I can also drop in some math. Now I have an annotation with math. Someone else in the group might come along and decide that they would like to respond. By dropping in a video. You can play it from right in the sidebar. An earthquake of magnitude 5.6 is. Now, in addition to creating threaded conversations through annotation on top of a document, you can also connect multiple documents across the web. This is the USGS site on earthquakes that have happened recently. Here's an earthquake that I want to take note of. I can drop this into my earthquake studies group as well. It follows me across the web. Add some more tags, post it to my earthquake studies group. I can now grab the link for this annotation and go back to my original article. Let's edit the very first annotation that I made. It might relate to this earthquake. I can just drop my link in. Now I have two documents linked across the web. Again, very useful for collaboration purposes. In addition to PDF and HTML and EPUB, you can also annotate data. Here's a CSV file that I was looking at with some information on earthquakes. Let's say I've got a question. Just select the cell, annotate it, 
I'm going to drop this into my earthquake studies group as well and say, I have a question. Is this right? And post it to my group. Someone else can come along and reply. I showed you how to create a group and how to add annotations from all across the web into that group, but I never took you back to the page. Let's check out our Earthquake Studies dashboard again. All of the annotations that I've made across the web have automatically populated here to this page. I can get back to any of my articles by clicking on the arrow, View Annotation in Context. Also, the tags that I was making, they've accumulated here. I can select a tag and it will be added to my faceted search at the top of the page. So I can just see, for example, the articles that I tagged Earthquake. It's a great way to explore and discover content through annotation. If I take off my group filter, I'll be able to see all of the annotations that have been made across the web, publicly at least. I also have an activity page just for me. That's our demo for today, and I'm happy to uh, take questions on the demo um, at the end. I want to tell you just a little bit about how to work with Hypothesis. Because Hypothesis is open source, you can integrate the code on your platform for free. We're permissively licensed, and we've got information on our publishing and developers page to help you do that. If you want something a little bit more custom, like a publisher group, we're happy to help you integrate Hypothesis. We have a very simple pricing model that's based on the number of documents that you publish annually. If you're working with a platform host, we're already in conversation with them to help you enable Hypothesis on your content. We also offer customization to best fit your UI, as well as an outreach program that you can use internally and externally to roll out annotation. If you have questions on any of these options, um, don't hesitate to email me. I'm just Heather at Hypothesis, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. If you have any questions that you haven't yet put into the Q&A, please do so now. And remember, we're looking for webinar suggestions for the future. So please go ahead and put those in the chat. And in just a moment, um, we'll be putting a poll up that you can respond to there. Uh, but we're happy now to take questions. Um, Nate, are there any questions? Uh, there, there are a couple of questions, actually. Um, Rob has asked if um, the uh, public layer can be turned off when there's a publisher group. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. Um, so the way that publisher groups work is that um, they, uh, when you have a publisher group over your content, it is the default group. Um, and if the person has not signed in to another annotation server uh, or service, um, then they won't see any other annotation layers. Um, but uh, if they have signed in, for instance, to, it could be a hypothesis, it could be uh, um, another annotation service, um, could be a, an internal annotation server, they will see the annotation layers um, that relate to your page, um, to your publisher page, um, uh, along, you know, with, your uh, annotation servers in the same way that uh, you've seen in the in the demos. So what we try to do is strike the balance between giving publishers co control over the layers that are visible by default, um, and uh, and in so doing, excluding other layers until the user elects to bring those layers um, to to the content. Um, I'll just keep going through a few more of these. What kind of support is there for applying annotation to images? Um, it's in the W3C spec. It's not supported by Hypothesis yet, but it is a, a frequent request uh, that we get. Um, and there are a number of libraries that are already compatible with the underlying uh, annotation uh, technology that Hypothesis is based on that we'll be incorporating. Um, our product roadmap is something that we kind of co-construct with partners that are interested in implementing things. If you have a particular uh, functionality that you're uh, interested in um, in implementing or having us support, um, we'd love to hear from you. 
Um, I'll also answer a question that Rob O'Donnell put in uh, the uh, in the chat. Um, can you comment on the use of authorized experts as a required credential for posting comments uh, on a competing product? Similar functionality and hypothesis warnings about such a system. Um, we have looked at at that, and you know, I, I think what the um, you know obviously what we're all trying to get to is. Uh, is infrastructure that supports high quality conversation, and and I think there's a variety of um, of questions about how the best way uh, is to to get there. We don't think that it is possible to automatically screen and determine the potential credibility of participants through a system that's imposed by us uh, on your content. Um, the first, uh, we by creating publisher groups and giving uh, publishers the moderation capabilities for those, um, we our goal is to give put you in charge of um, uh, who uh, you want to be able to to have uh, make discussions uh, and 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 create annotations over your content in your default groups. For hypothesis, um, based on the million and a half annotations that we've seen, we are able to maintain a high degree of decorum through um, the the moderation um, approaches that we take um, in our um, in our system. If we need to develop more automated systems um, to help screen or pre-screen annotations, um, we'll do so. But we did not feel that it was important to try to get in front of that. Um, with uh, with the kind of system that we've seen elsewhere. Um, Heather uh, Blackburn asks, can Hypothesis be implemented on one annual issue of a journal rather than the whole site? The answer is absolutely yes. You can implement uh, uh, annotation over as much or as little of your site as possible. Um, and we're all, we're very much in favor of experiments too. Um, if you want to uh, try it out in in uh, a narrow uh, place and work with us to to run a little promotion um, to see what the response is. Um, we think that's a great um, strategy. Um, the annotate uh, John uh, Abrams asks uh, uh, Abrahams asks, uh, do the annotation tools allow creating annotation on images and video? Um, it did already answer the, the question about uh, images. Not yet, um, and the same goes for video. We hear um, those requests. Um, we do plan on implementing support for both images and video. Um, we've got some more work to do uh, on different group types uh, and uh, export and uh, more powerful forms of notifications um, before uh, we get around to those, but those are absolutely things that we'll be focused on and uh, potentially in the next year. Audio annotation support uh, from Allison. Um, thanks. Uh, that that would for us falls in the category of of uh, streaming um, uh, media. So for us, audio is a subset of video. Um, the, that absolutely um, would be something that we will support uh, in the in the future. And, and thanks for asking that specifically. Um, uh, Daniel Ruiz asks uh, that uh, um, we would love to help help adding the functionality to choose the Spanish language. Just looking forward to know how and when we can do it. Um, I, one thing that's important to say, the, the interface already supports annotation in um, foreign languages, uh, including Chinese and Japanese characters. So I can annotate texts, including vertical Japanese texts, um, that uh, either in PDF, EPUB, or HTML form, and I can add those foreign languages to the body of the annotation. The interface itself is not yet internationalized. Um, we understand that that's a priority and important for um, the widest possible adoption in different uh, questions, uh, or different, uh, I'm sorry, in different countries, uh, and um, we'll be working on that um, um, in in the, the year next year or two that's probably um, when that's going to happen. Uh, Jason Barclou asks uh, during annotation it seems like the text is always highlighted even though uh, an only an annotation was done 
can then a highlight be turned off? Absolutely, there's a button right on the interface. It's got a little eye and you can turn the annotations on uh, and off. Um, we do believe that it's really important for users to be able to get to a clean page. All of the webinars that we do will be recorded and connected to our publishing page. So if you're not able to attend in person on the day of the event, you'll be able to join later. In addition to um, the webinars, we've got lots of information, um, toolkits and resources that are available on our publisher as well as our developer page that you can share uh, internally and uh, with your technology partners and end users as well. I want to thank you again for joining us today and, and, and mention just once more that this um, will be recorded and available from our page. Um, you can share it and along with a lot of other information available there, uh, including just a brief uh, demo recording if that's what you're interested in. And we'd love to hear from you in the future to continue the conversation. Thanks so much.